G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be showing you the true War Thunder experience, not the one that they show you in the streams or in the in the YouTube videos or in the trailers or on uh, the War Thunder website. No, this is the War Thunder experience that you're watching straight from the, uh, the source, if you will, raw, if you will. And this is the LA-9. The LA-9 is one of the planes that I originally bashed a little bit for being what I called mediocre, because it doesn't climb particularly amazingly, its hyper altitude performance isn't particularly amazing, it uh, doesn't turn particularly incredibly, uh, there's nothing particularly remarkable about this plane, and to me, it just gave you sort of lots of two or three kill games, which were, which were okay, don't get me wrong, it's, it's pretty good, but I was really looking for those standout games. Now, uh, I did get some standout games, and uh, oh my god, they are some of the strangest games that I've ever played in War Thunder, and both of these games that I'm going to show you today are happening back to back. So this was the second game, we're going to show you in reverse order, just because the other one is a little bit more interesting as well. Um, this one is just, oh my lord. But uh, before we get into this, I'd just like to give a quick shout out to Jean-Claude Van Schott, who is a War Thunder content creator. Now, it's his birthday today, as this video goes up right now. Um, so go over to the link in the description below. He's doing a 24-hour live stream. Send him my love. Uh, tell him you sent me. And maybe if you're feeling generous, send him a little bit of a, uh, a sub subscription through your Twitch Prime. So back to the gameplay. Our team is currently falling apart in chat. And honestly, it won't be long until they uh, kind of fall apart in-game as well. Fast forwarding a little bit more here and you can kind of see where this is going. Our uh, American and Japanese friends here have uh, gotten themselves a pretty solid looking victory. But I'll tell you what, it's not quite over yet because I've been a smart cookie and I decided to put some altitude into this baby and we're going to do some boom and zooming. Boom and zooming is probably the most rudimentary way of dogfighting or, or of fighting in an aircraft, and it's pretty much the surefire way to get as many kills as possible. So if you can gain altitude over your, your uh, opponents and then boom and zoom, that is going to be your best case scenario. But unfortunately here, a lot of these planes are sort of very, very quick, and the LA-9 doesn't like quick opponents. It likes really nice and slow opponents. So I'm going to pick the one that is up in a vertical Standing right in front of me there, F-80A, and I shear off the tail. Now, these guns are very low velocity, but they do pack a big punch at this tier. Especially when your targets are slow. And so what I'm doing is I'm basically boom and zooming, conserving as much energy as possible in order to dive on the slowest opponent and try and make them pay. So I'm basically just biding my time, trying to pick the right ones. But... All of my enemies seem to be going pretty quick, so I'm just going to put it up in a vertical and try and get the ones that are sort of chasing the Tempest here. Now, our uh, Tempest friend is going for AI, as you do when you've got lots of enemies on you. So I'm going to try and at least get one or two off his back, because if that means that he's doing some baiting for me, then I can get away with a little bit more of uh, a, maybe a couple more kills while I'm at it. So... Who am I going to go for here? It looks like the F-80A is pretty quick. The A-2D is not a threat, but I'm going to put a little bit of altitude into it as well. Have a look at that team list. That is pretty damn dire. So, what's on the cards here? The J-7 looks like a pretty juicy target, so I'm going to try and intercept the J-7 and get myself a nice kill on a slow target, except he's not really that slow, and just as he gets into that nice... Uh, sort of range where I'm willing to shoot, he pulls away, so no dice there. F2G is looking pretty fine as well, but he dives underneath my guns because they're top mounted. It gives me a bit of a hard shot and I don't make it. The next one here is an F80 who is looking pretty fine, but um, I'm probably not going to get much dice here. B51 as well is looking fairly juicy, but he's well underneath me and I don't really want to go for a target below. So what I'm doing is I'm continuing in a straight line and it looks like I'm over my uh, airfield AA which is starting to claim a couple of lives. F-80A there goes for the head on and I miss, he misses too and he's almost touching me there with those 50 cals. Basically I'm going in between them and oh man he's just pitched up nice and high for me. The J7 also looks like he's coming in for me so I've got to put the nose down and get more speed to run away from the J7. F-88 gets taken out by AA, 
and the F-80 in front of me trades for some shots. I go for the re-engage, he goes for the re-engage, and he, uh... Oh boy. Well, that's not looking pretty good, but at least the J-7 gets shot down by AAA. Now, a little friend here in Nigel's squadron, who's a pretty damn good sport, if I do say so myself, decides not to runway strafe me. So, believe it or not, because I'm over my airfield, I now have a chance to go and land, repair, and rearm. I am not even kidding you. They may have just thrown that entire match just from the AAA. Now, a lot of you guys know that I don't really like AAA. Now, if it's there, I, I guess you could probably use it, but I, I try not to when I when I can. And in this case, it just so happens that the match was over the uh, airfield AAA, but man, that is some strong AA. And I do have a video on that AAA, and if you would like to see it, it will be in the top right hand corner of the screen. So check that one out after you've finished this one. Please, any watch time is very greatly appreciated, of course. So back in the air and it turns out my Nigel friend has uh, lost his engine so he just does the thing and bails out for me which gives me a another kill so I'm on I'm only on two kills here I've gotten two kills total and their enemy team has basically thrown the entire match away <laughs> it's kind of incredible that that one thing that triple-a that is just really really powerful has cost them the match so because uh, a couple of us decided to play like pussies, well, I guess hiding behind the AA in my case is a little bit like a little bit low, but um, having that opportunity is just it's just like having a game for free. All you have to do on these types of maps is just camp around the AA and you've got a solid victory. Now I certainly don't recommend this in the slightest because to me it's kind of playing like a little bitch and I as much as I like winning, I don't really like winning by playing like a little bitch so I'm gonna try and avoid that in future as much as possible but for this case where the fight just so happened to take place over the airfield it's resulted in basically a victory as long as I can kill this P-51 and as long as I can kill this F-2G Corsair it's kind of crazy how the whole match turned around with a single bad batch of triple AA so I, I don't know what to say I think my video still stands, and the points that I made in that video are more than relevant. Anyway, head on here with the P-51, no dice of course, but I'm going to go and switch my turn so as to uh, try and make the guy like roll a little bit more. I'm going out of the way of his guns, and I'm going to put it into the vertical. Now, you've noticed that I haven't quite started rolling scissors, but because I over-rolled there, it gave me a little bit less time to pull out of the way of this P-51, but now that he's overshot here, I have a shot and I get hits. That's alright though because with the LA-9 I have some fairly good acceleration and I'm able to plant the shots straight into his cockpit and set him on fire. This leaves the F2G1 who has decided to abandon his friend and go after I think it's AA which is really really not a smart move. If you're in a 2 versus 1 you absolutely should never ever throw it away. Leaving it as a 1 versus 1 is a surefire way to lose a match and this F2G, whilst he may be going for ground targets with bombs, has absolutely thrown this match away. If he had gone for an easy kill while he was being dog for, or while his uh, teammate was baiting me, that could have been a very easy kill. And just with a simple head-on, I get an, en uh, an engine smoking, and I've probably damaged maybe his entire engine, maybe his airframe, maybe his inner wing, and this is basically game over. Once this happens, it's not a lot that you can really do because you've just lost all of your enemies via AA and then decided to go and try and bomb a couple targets in your F2G1 instead of going after the LA-9 that is, um, in my opinion, a little bit inferior in certain circumstances. Don't get me wrong, the LA-9 is a perfectly capable plane um, and I certainly have to walk back on that statement of it being mediocre, but... Uh, in some cases, the F2G, I would I would probably take it in some cases over the LA-9. I will say though, the LA-9 does have its absolute upsides. When you are in an energy advantage, this thing is a killer of a plane. And in this next match, we are sort of going to explore that with uh, a couple of interesting situations. So, we're going to move on to the next match. And this particular match happened on uh, another winter map. I don't know what it is with LA-9s and winter maps, but I seem to be getting some pretty good games. 
At B24 we have up above, and I'm not really going to pitch for him. Or am I? Let's see how we go, because if he is maybe a kilometer and a half at most above me, which it looks like he might be, then maybe I'd consider going for him. But it looks like I'm not going to bother because an N1K has popped up in front of me. And so what I'm going to do is prioritize the N1K, because a B24 is, at least I think it is, you might, might be a bit of a spoiler or a little bit of foreshadowing for later, not as deadly as an N1K. So... N1K is barreling straight towards me, and a P51 is also barreling straight towards me. So I have a 2 versus 1 situation, and the Spitfire has gone off for the B24, so I don't have any backup. But the N1K is probably my biggest threat right now, because he is at my altitude, and he is definitely going for some other friendlies that are or me, basically. He's going for me. The J6 is also going for me, and only now I have a friendly in the area who's pitching for him, causing the N1K to go into the vertical. Now, this plane does retain decent amounts of energy in the vertical, and the N1K is thankfully eliminated by the I-225. Absolutely beautiful play there by the I-225, leaving me with the J6K, and allowing me to get out shots like... Oh, not quite. Not quite a shot like that. But if you do get a shot like that, it's really, really nice. If you don't, you can always set your plane up to try again. Don't ever get greedy with shots like this. Still remain on the uh, on the high alert. Never relax your guard because you might end up in a situation where it ends up favoring the enemy instead. But because we managed to eliminate the N1K, we can very Ill easily eliminate the J6K in this case here because when you have that numbers advantage, like I said in the previous game, it is extremely easy to get kills. Now, what is also easy about uh, getting kills is having a damaged B24. Now, notice that the B24 is smoking and the Spitfire has probably gone down to land because he's run out of ammo because Spitfire. Um, but at the end of the day, a damaged B24 is a lot easier to kill than a B24 that has an altitude advantage on you. So I just go for a quick pilot snipe just because he's up there, just because he's in the way, and I don't spend too much ammunition on it. Bomber pilots are most of the time fairly harmless because in most cases they're not going to climb to space and drain the tickets and if they are you should be having someone prioritize them so things like 264s or b29s are the really scary ones speaking of scary ones a kai 84 is also very very scary but when they commit to head-ons like that they are extremely easy kills and of course not spending much of my ammunition on a head-on is very very important having that kai 84 out of the match also is very valuable because Kai 84s are very strong. They have a great climb rate, they have a great turn rate, and as a result, uh, of course, with great guns, it's very, very hard to sustain a dogfight against an, a, a Kai 84. So, we're going to sit here, we're going to go up for some boom and zoom maneuvers once again. Boom and zoom maneuvers are really the core of Air RB. If you can, if you can manage that, especially props, not so much jets, but especially props are very, very much reliant on boom and zoom maneuvers. Now, I'm here taking a gamble watching too many movies and too many documentary or too many uh, history channel documentaries going into a vertical and trying to stall out the Corsair here but unfortunately J7 is looking at my uh, booty hole but it's also looking down the nose of 423mm cannons and the J7 is just going to crumble which is good for me but I shouldn't be taking risky head-ons like that, not against 430mm cannons, because the 430mm cannons are just as deadly as the 423s. So, moving on here, what are my next targets? F-82 is traveling at me quickly, and he's closing, so the F-4U is no longer my highest threat, it is indeed the F-82. Now, I can't be taking head-ons against this guy, so I spray just a little bit, cop myself a critical hit, and then go straight into the vertical to get out of the gunfire of this... Uh, of this F-82. Now the F-4U-4 came in very quickly and now he is in the energy disadvantage giving me the opportunity to line up a shot and maybe I can get some oh beautiful beautiful shot on that uh, F-4U-4. The F-82 put his fire out but I have a P-51 who is approaching me quite rapidly. Now I have an energy disadvantage in this point because he's got a fair amount more altitude on me and he is also closing the distance which means he's faster than me. And if you're faster and have higher altitude, you're in a very, very good spot because you basically control the fight. And as someone who is on the other side of that, you need to find a way to get them to waste a lot of their energy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a 90 degree turn and then I'm going to slowly close in 
underneath the P51, which will probably, if he follows, cause him to go for that. But he's noticed that there is a friendly Spitfire in the air, and he's decided to wise up a little bit and uh, take that fight away. Except, not really. He's going to go for the full commit head-on with me, and he's, he's going to cut a wing off. So, ugh. I, I genuinely hate when this happens. For me personally, last minute head-ons, I it, it makes me make me very sad. But because I put myself in a shitty situation by being an absolute moron, I have to live with that. And I had no other choice. My best option when he decided he was gonna full commit was to full commit with him. I thought he was gonna stall out, I misread that, and unfortunately now I'm missing a wingtip and I have four bullets left. So my only real option here is to try and make it back to land. One of the things that I have noticed with a lot of War Thunder players is that they, they especially recently, uh, in the last sort of year or so, have been going for a lot more last minute head-ons. If someone is heading towards you, you really don't want to be pulling last minute head-ons. You want to be pulling away and trying to gain a little bit more speed to uh, compensate the speed that you've just lost. You don't want to be wasting more speed or potentially risking a plane even if you're fairly slow. Um, those last minute head-ons where you full commit should be an absolute last resort and in this particular case here Yeah, they were an absolute last resort because I had put myself into a stall and the p51 was going down right in front of me so I didn't really have too many options So that is my seventh kill with the f82 going down and I need to just make it back to base with one wing now at this particular tier repair costs are also very high and I did talk about that in my Bearcat video um, which was I quite enjoyed making that video. I was very proud of it. But um, in that video, I discussed that top this particular tier of props, because they're so strong, especially against the earlier jets, they have a very high repair cost. Now, I don't agree with the high repair cost, but it's there, and we have to kind of just live with it for now until we can sort of convince Gaijin otherwise. As a result of these high repair costs, you kind of get a situation where wasting your plane is a very costly maneuver. So, in this case, even though I have a lot of Silver Lions, I really want to be careful with the way I play my plane. I don't want to, uh, for those of you that care about your stats maybe, I don't want to in incur a death on my stat card. For those of you that care about repair cost, I don't really want to incur another repair cost. So what I've decided to do is experiment with the flaps before I land. Instead, I found that it is fairly costly, so I've just taken the flaps back up and I'm going to put it down on one landing gear. I'm going to do like a little little bit of a touch and go and then squeeze on the brakes there as soon as I put both mains on the ground. Uh, for those of you who uh, are interested, don't hammer the brakes on this plane because it will nose over and I don't know the consequences because I don't want to try it because I don't want to lose my plane or my pilot, which is a fairly regular occurrence for some of these planes. Now, if you're the JU-88 pilot or the 288 pilot, that is a bit of a hard landing. Come in with a little bit less speed and you have those air brakes. So remember that when you're landing bombers nice and slow. Now, fast forward here and we're having a look at a B-24. He's below us. I've managed to climb up to altitude and the Spitfire here has done a little bit of damage. I thought, surely this guy's going down, but it looks like he's going to be pulling out. This could potentially be my eighth kill and eight kills is a, is a game that I don't really get very often. Uh, the most kills that I've ever managed to get is eight and I think that was in the J21A, and I think I may have gotten, uh, I got seven kills and a ram in the Heinkel 100D, which was, you know, these are low tier planes. This could be my first eight kill game in a nice high tier plane, um, and that would give me some feelings of having a large appendage. So in this case, I would be definitely looking for this B24. I'm gonna come down from the top because I'm pretty sure that is where the least amount of guns are. Now, we're gonna pause it here for a little bit. I want you to tell me or to predict in the comment section below what the outcome of this is going to be. Do I A, snipe the pilot with no bullshit whatsoever, B, get absolutely bullshitted, or C, disconnect and ram into the ground? You choose. We're going to have a look at it. So, I'm going to go in for the shots and, um, yeah, out of all the things to happen, I was not expecting that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the true War Thunder experience. Seven kills? Tough shit. You can get 50 cald and die in an instant. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed these types of videos. I, I really like this sort of stuff. And if you guys want to see, for example, a room tour or anything sort of a little bit more personal, that'll be on my Instagram. But for now, take care, and I'll catch you next time.